Institute for the Advancement of Cognitive Education. These are powerful podcasts, conversations with scholars, authors, and professionals, cutting edge resources, helping you to enhance better thinking and learning. Good day. Today we've got a very exciting conversation with Professor Jeremy Bruick. He is a Assistant Professor of Education at the University of Mount Union in Alliance, Ohio, where he teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in education technology, primary grades education and educational leadership. In 2014, he received the Ohio Board of Regents Best Ed Tech Collegiate Innovator Award. He has been researching the use of ebooks, digital media, mobile devices, and the development of transliterary skills in the design of high quality language and literacy rich environments for over a decade. His current research examines digital media platforms in terms of platforms affordances, digital architecture of media, and dashboard analytics. Jeremy, you are so welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So, of course, I discovered your work and your research work coincidentally when I read an article from the Journal of Cognitive Education and Psychology that you published in 2019. First of all, I would just like to compliment you and the other scholars that worked on that article. I think it's a very good article and well-researched work. So, congratulations on that. No, thank you so much. We appreciate it. It was a very much of a team effort. All of the people on our team were major contributors and brought a variety of different perspectives to that work. So I'm glad that people are finding out about it and enjoying it. And for our listeners that are more scholarly inclined, I would really encourage you to go and read that article. I think it's an excellent piece of research work. So, Jeremy, why is it essential that parents, teachers, and practitioners know about ebooks and digital reading platforms? Well, it's a timely topic as we're in the, the midst of this smart device revolution that we're kind of seeing. People are, have access to mobile phones, but now we're seeing even more connectivity built into things like household items and fashion accessories, like watches. So people are connected. The shifting of youth culture has moved away from television and into this kind of media consumption type of experience where they use Netflix and Amazon Prime and these subscription-based services. So as we're educating a different type of student, a different generation, what we're finding is that these digital reading platforms have started to emerge to kind of take advantage of all that connectivity. So it's timely in that tech savvy parents and teachers can provide kids now with any time, any place access to lots of age appropriate titles. And in the future, it could be access somewhere like just like your refrigerator door on a smart connected home device, you know? So the literacy in this age is so different. It's not just interacting with print like we traditionally have. Now we interact with digital text, hyperlinks, and it's a very different experience. So it's important that parents are aware of these emerging platforms and begin to think critically about how they might be able to use them to the benefit of their child as their child's growing and developing and learning. I just had a conversation earlier today with somebody else, and we were you know, just talking about the impact of COVID-19 and how different the educational environment might look afterwards. And in our conversation, it just came out the importance that parents and, and teachers will have to start to educate students more and more how to use digital platforms. Right. So you have a variety of different educational needs that are being addressed when you think about that particular aspect of it. Not only are we trying to teach young children the, still the things that we've always been teaching them with the literacy, but now we're providing professional development to teachers on how to use and interact with the platforms, what features to, that they should be drawn to, and make sure that students know how to use. So there's a lot of learning that needs to go on between just the development of the platform and the implementation at the child level. And that's what our work's been trying to do. We've been noticing that there's a growing number of these platforms in the marketplace, but there's then surprisingly little that, about what we know about their quality as curriculum, 
and how they support learners. So we felt there's a practical knowledge that needs to be made. And that's what we've been trying to do with our research most recently is the development of tools that we can use to analyze the platforms and apply design-based principles and literacy principles in those tools to help get a better understanding of how these platforms can meet the needs of learners. And I think that's what I found so relevant in your article that you published is that if parents or teachers that are engaging with these online reading development platforms have to assess whether this is a good platform or not, there's very little known in the environment currently how to do that. I just think the work that you're doing is so relevant to what is currently happening in the educational environment. Yeah, and we've been lucky in the fact that we assembled a diverse team of scholars uh, almost 10 years ago where we had experts in each of the different areas that we've talked about the, uh, as touch points, literacy experts, technology experts, and merging with some developers. So that has been beneficial in us getting a little bit of a jump start. But if there's a time that it's important, it's this time right now because so many kids are going to come into contact with these instructional resources. And we just need to figure out, are they worth the time and possibly money? Or do we need to move on and find a better tool to help us meet our instructional goals? So we've already started to open up the topic for our listeners, but <laughs> just very briefly, what is the notion of ebooks and digital reading platforms and how can it enhance better thinking and learning? Sure. So I think it's important to understand that ebooks make up a part of a digital reading platform. So I'm going to start with the ebooks and just talk a little bit about what we do know. The ebooks uh, possess digital features that are designed to provide evidence based instruction. So an ebook or an online text offers sometimes animations to support the text. And that might be similar to what an adult or a teacher would offer an explanation as they're reading a story to a child. In ebooks, students can use a read to me feature, and this would be similar to having a teacher or a parent offer a repeated reading of a text to support understanding and comprehension. Right. So what we've seen with ebooks for about the last 10 years actually is that they can scaffold the reading experience for learners of all ages and then enable literacy instruction to occur at times and places that are outside of the classroom and embedded right within the book or the material that the child's using. And that's very powerful in itself. And we know a fair amount about what ebooks offer, and we know less about the platforms that are now beginning to house them. So, just like we have, have libraries for years and years cataloging paper books, now we're seeing these digital reading platforms, which are really a software as a service um, that house large collections of ebooks and they enable children and adults to read, to write, to communicate, and interact within the electronic texts. So, the platforms usually provide this comprehensive web and mobile interface to deliver all of those services to whoever might be using them, districts, schools, parents, students, and they're delivering those through the connected web and using primarily this like a learning management system, it would be more commonly referred to. What these platforms do is they leverage those affordances that a learning management system has in delivering content and handling registration, administration. Um, they also provide assessment tools, um, the skills gap analysis, tracking, reporting. So it's a very comprehensive web system that these ebooks are being cataloged into. So that in itself is very beneficial for teachers. You know, some of the reporting and administration that they might do manually now can be handled with these digital reading platforms in essence. And the point is that you get good programs and you get not so good programs. And it would be just so important that teachers and parents and practitioners actually access and use very good platforms that can develop language development and reading skills and so on. Absolutely. And it, even more important that those people know what are the components in a good system and what should I be looking for when they're evaluating. Because as parents and teachers, we're always making those choices. And without criteria to know what I should be looking for in a good system, it makes it much more challenging and daunting for an individual parent or teacher. 
So I think what's important for our listeners is the notion of language development and the important part that reading play in that. And in the 21st century, and more and more so as we move forward, the use of digital platforms in developing language and reading skills will become just so crucial. Absolutely. Jeremy, regarding ebooks and digital reading platforms, what have you found are some of the biggest challenges that parents, teachers, and practitioners might face? And in your opinion, what are some recommended ways to overcome them? Sure. So, as far as research goes, the roles of using ebooks in teaching of reading is, is still emerging. We know that there's a, a number of affordances that are not only possible with a new reading experience like highlighting text and embedding audio and video, but also accessibility benefits with an ebook collection that can be archived on a small mobile device in houses like a pocket-sized library. But the instructional guidance for implementing those books is pretty scant, so it leaves teachers to trial and error efforts at incorporating ebooks into their routine practice. So as a result, what we might see is ebooks becoming more of an uh, educational entertainment in an instructional day rather than maybe being more effectively implemented and intertwined into the pedagogy and process that we have in the classroom. But we've seen some benefits through research about what teachers can do. So in some smaller studies, we've seen teachers use ebooks and ebook libraries very similar to activities that we see in normal literacy instruction. So an ebook can be used for a read aloud, for example, and a teacher right. could share the ebook with students through that format and start. Right. Sure, it is mainly a substitution of a book for a digital text, but Developing comfort as a teacher in using those kind of resources and making sure that you understand what are the features that the digital text possesses that the regular book might not and how do I share that with students uh, becomes really important. So starting in a comfort level and then maybe using it for a paired reading and letting kids share an ebook together. So research has shown that translating traditional literacy practice into ebook instruction has had success and has been beneficial until we can have larger scale studies and more people participating it'll be very difficult to develop a set of best practice for incorporating ebooks in the routine so from a, an ebook standpoint getting started uh, where you're comfortable is the most important thing i think and recommendation i have for teachers and parents the one piece of advice I would offer is if it seems like the book isn't good or isn't high quality and isn't doing what you expect it to do, to find a different option, you know, right. to just be okay with, hey, I found a book or an app that isn't as good as I thought it was, and that's okay. I'm going to look at uh, find another and try again. And what you underline is so important is that teachers shouldn't be scared to try it out and get comfortable with it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, in the blog post, I've listed uh, 10 key areas where that research has told us uh, are places that are right for teachers to focus on. So I think also if listeners visit the blog following the podcast, they can find those tips there. Getting started is a big one. You know, taking a risk and being a risk taker. And isn't that what we ask students to do when we ask them to pick a book or try a new book? We're asking them to take a risk. So we have to do that as teachers as well and implement them gradually and then build our own familiarity. So it's time sometimes in, in many cases for teachers and for parents to go back to being a kid and taking time to read those books themselves, to touch on the screen, to see what happens when I use the speaker button or if I use the A button. Because what we're finding is in many of these books, we're having a common user interface where if you press the camera button, it means that you're probably going to get the camera to open up. Or right. if I press the speaker button, I'm probably going to hear something. Right. So. Figuring all that out as a teacher is of the utmost importance before you start using them with children because it directs your instruction to them that you, when you're reading aloud one of those stories, you say, hey, now look at this. What does this look like? It's the speaker button. What do you think will happen when I press that? Now right. let's see if we're right. And modeling for kids all of the behaviors that we want good readers of digital text to have. Right. And then it becomes interactive. 
Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. It gets kids involved. It gets them engaged. And then they're inclined to look and pick their own book and try it out themselves. That's so important because oftentimes I get the idea that people think the moment you move digitally, it takes away the interaction, the human interaction. But that's not what you're saying. What you're saying is that if you implement uh, ebooks and digital reading platforms effectively, it will actually enhance the engagement between teachers and students or parents and children, right? That's absolutely what I'm saying. If you implement ebooks and digital reading platforms correctly or effectively in the classroom, it will build upon what's happening in the classroom and take it out into the remote space as well. So you can help build good practices in the time that you spend together, either as parent and child or teacher and students. And then those students can take that catalog of books and they can take that experience and now do that either on their own or with a sibling and share that with other people. The thing that I see teachers fearing the most is if I, you start to use digital text, then I will lose my importance or my relevance as a teacher. And that's not it at all. Right. Students are always going to need your guidance and expertise. It's just that your role as a teacher with digital text has changed some from what it was with traditional texts because right. of the components we've talked about, the mobility, the data analytics tracking, all of that. It just has changed your role. And now you're more of an instructional coach to parents and children to help them have this rich literacy and learning environment wherever they're at, not just in the classroom. Right. What are some other important signs that parents and teachers will start to see if they implement ebooks and digital reading platforms effectively? There's a number of things I think that we'll see. You'll see that your students will begin to be more comfortable reading ebooks in the traditional spaces once you've done it effectively. So, for example, you might think of that cozy chair somewhere in your house or the reading corner of a classroom where students would go to pick a book and browse and then read. Now you'll see that merge out into the digital realm as well, where they'll have their device with them, but they still want to curl up in a soft chair or have a blanket or, you know, do the things that we like to do when we think of what we do with a good book will still curl up. So you'll want to be aware of that and make sure that you provide those spaces in your house and in your classroom where traditional reading is encouraged and so is digital reading. And kids have a choice. Maybe one day they go to the paperback book, but maybe another day they're on their Kindle or some other connected device. Let them have that choice because the more you can get their hands and their nose in a book, the more opportunities they have to, be, to learn. I think you'll also see that reading won't become necessarily such an independent event any longer. So if we all have a device where we can access the same catalog and set of books, then there's a little more equity there and there's a little more opportunity for all students to begin talking about the same text or reading it along together. One of the interesting things I've seen with kids is that they'll get on like their Discord server or their streaming service that they're using and they'll read through a book together. Wow. where they'll listen to the book through audio, but in a group. So even though they're disconnected by space, yeah. they're connected in all these little things. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Yeah, I mean, what we learn from others and the connections we make from what they're saying. So if we're discussing a book uh, and someone says, well, I think it was this, and then some another person says, well, I don't know about that. It could be this. Okay, now we're looking and we're supporting what we think by hopefully using evidence that we found in the text. Well, that's a very high-level learning goal that we have for students. And Absolutely. they're doing it on their own, you yeah. know? Wow. What are some relevant resources, tools, online literature sources that you can direct our readers to if they want to read up more or find out more about this topic of ebooks and digital reading platforms? Sure. So uh, I've provided a reference page of all of the work that I've been involved in within this area from looking at the ebook by itself to the platform um, over about the last 10 years. And I'll provide links to that on the blog post that goes along with a podcast. I always tell people if you need to fall asleep late at night, read one of those pieces. They're, they're the more scholarly work. But I've also included some links to other websites that I think are helpful, for, especially for parents. So for parents, 
I think Common Sense Media is an excellent website that provides lists of apps and of digital libraries for parents. So I'll, I've included those links. It provides pretty plain language and they have somewhat of a rating system where they at least try to help the end user visualize is this quality or not quality. And I found that their criteria are fairly solid when we're looking to evaluate different apps and books. For teachers, the Reading Rockets website is really sound when it comes just to literacy best practice, and they do have a couple pieces that I've linked in the blog that go back to using eBooks. So I'd recommend that, along with a couple other collectives and websites that are all focused on digital media. So the Digital Media Project is a good place to look, and the International Collective of Children's Digital Books is another website that has a lot of different apps aspects of what we've been talking about today all in one place. So I would recommend any of those. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage our listeners to go to the blog and all of these resources will be listed there. Where can our listeners, if they want to reach out to you with a question, how can they get hold of you? Sure. Uh, I mean, the easiest way is just throw a tweet out there on Twitter. I'm at BruickJ23, so B-R-U-E-C-K-J-2-3. Uh, you could also follow up. I'll provide a, an email contact on the blog. And you can email me through my institution. If you're interested in this research, I would love to hear from you. I would love to form some connections with other people that are working in this area. We need to become more united and more collaborative so that we can continue uh, learning more and help more students, more teachers, and more parents. Fantastic. Jeremy, thank you so much. This was a wonderfully insightful conversation. Thank you for sharing your knowledge so openly with us. Thank you for your thorough preparation. And I think you are doing excellent work, very relevant, especially to our context in a developing country. So thank you very much for the conversation. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. I'm glad that you were able to reach out. And if you need anything in the future, I'd be happy to follow up with you guys. Thank you so much. That was Professor Jeremy Bruick, Assistant Professor of Education at the University of Mount Union in Ohio, United States. This podcast is produced by the Institute for the Advancement of Cognitive Education. Find us online at www.ilearnthinking.org or on social media at ilearnthinking.org.